Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. Welcome to our fabulous country. My name is Venetius Almeida Silva, land baron and friend of the people. Look, the situation is like this. Many of my products can only be brought to the coast in a troublesome manner, and the profits are suffering from that. Start by bringing the commodities from the interior of the country to the coast, and don't care about any building regulations. I have enough friends in politics with an open ear for my needs. All right, hi, this is Atticon, and welcome to a do-over of the um, second scenario in the Crossing the Andes uh, DLC. And why am I doing a do-over? Because I wasn't happy with the first time. I It was perfectly adequate gameplay, hit all the dates. In fact, I went ahead and finished it and, you know, got a president level and blah, blah, blah. Didn't like it. Was not happy with it. Um, so, I'm going to do it over, and here's the thing. What I found is, the reason I was so frustrated with it was, I came to realize I was trying to play the game the way I felt like other people wanted it to be played, with the the uh, fancy junctions and the uh, um, all the merging lines and, you know, trunk lines carrying all your traffic and all that stuff, and I finally just said, uh-uh. Play it the way you know how to play it. Play it the way you know how to beat very hard competitors on the hardest settings and get the president rating, you know, every time you play. That's how you need to play the game. So we're going to go back and play, and forgive me for this, but we're going to go back and play this the Attican way. So the first thing we are going to do, however, is because of the, the extreme nature of that eight um, rural station connection in... Uh, in one year, basically in six months in order to stay on track, we are going to go ahead and use the method where we just simply literally create all the connections. So we're going out and grabbing um, uh, the closest possible rural stations to uh, our home base of Sao Paulo and just making connections. We're not running any trains. We're not doing anything except getting those connections done. So we'll do that very, very quickly. And that's exactly the same as um, as we did it on the other uh, go through this. So um, uh, let me just fast forward through this. This is kind of boring. way we can venture a step into the next century. If possible, me and my friends will keep foreign investors out of Brazil. For the good of the people, of course. All right. The technological progress will fall by the way. I'm just going to talk right over him. So, apparently we got better. Because last time it took eight days to do this. This time we did it in two days. So that's, that's getting better. Getting better. I guess just jumped right on it. So what we're going to do now is just delete practically everything. Because we've got that new task to go down to Porto Alegre. And, or, excuse me, is that right? Yeah, Porto Alegre. And, um... So we need that money back. So we're going to grab most of our stuff back and get rid of the things that we're not going to use right away so that we have some more capital. And we got back almost all of our money. So we've got a regular train station here in Curitiba. And I just did that because I know I'm going to run two lines here. Again, remember, we're going to do, go back to our dedicated point-to-point -point lines. So this first line is going to be between Curitiba and Sao Paulo, just to get us some income going, get some trains running, have a nice uh, profitable line running between those two cities, get them started uh, growing, which will help uh, 
generate more money and more revenue for us and um, and just have a, a basic city to city line and have our connection made so that we so that we can work our way further south. Porto Alegre is down to our south from here. So we're going to do a point to point double track connection. Set our signals in our our uh, supply tower and uh, run some trains. So let's uh, let's speed it up again. All right, so that was fast. So now we've got a standard four train city to city setup. Now we want to take advantage of the particulars of this scenario. And strong advice to you, anytime you do these scenarios, take a look around and see what is different about this one compared to all the other ones. Particularly with it, with these DLCs, they're coming out with these kind of clever things. And then this one, the difference is we've got these, it's called coffee barons for a reason. Because coffee is king here. We have high demand for coffee in four port cities. Uh, this one we're looking at here, Curitiba. We've got Porto Alegre down to the south that, that has high demand. A little further up the, up the coast, we have Porto Seguro. And even further up the coast, we have Salvador. So there's four cities on this map that all have a demand for three coffee a week. Now that's almost double the demand that you would have for corn and logs and meat or, or uh, uh, any of those uh, essentials that cities need to build in this game. So that makes it a big deal. So what we want to do is own the coffee plantation and then we want to get paid, um, you know, same concept we talked about in the other video, which is, you know, own the supply chain. We want to we want to make money on the coffee plantation, make money shipping the coffee, and then make, well, in this case, that's it. There's no industry attached with it. The research facility takes it from there. But uh, we want to make money on both of those things and take advantage of the um, scenario. So, again, what I would say is when you have a scenario like this, don't let the the oddball thing it does throw you for a loop. Think about it for a second and think about how you're going to turn that into a profit. That's the whole point. Turn turn the scenario into a profit for you, not, not a challenge. And so this is definitely an opportunity, not a challenge. So now we're going to run a uh, line over to Curitiba, dedicated line, and uh, we'll never have traffic problems. It'll just flow and flow and flow, and we'll just keep moving coffee into Curitiba. And our line over there on the other platform uh, going to um, uh, Sao Paulo will we'll run without having any problems, and life is good. Now, of course, we want to turn our attention to getting that coffee down to Porto Alegre. So we are going to expand our uh, coffee production, and we're going to get ready to uh, run coffee down south. And it's a pretty long um, route, uh, very mountainous, so we're going to make as a smart a one as we can make and uh, get down there, set up our uh, station in Porto Alegre, and then, uh, of course, start shipping the coffee. And you can see, I'm just kind of waiting. All these scenarios, free mode, whatever you're playing in this game, I've said this a uh, number of times before, it's very slow at the start. It, it just has, just by its nature, it's slow because uh, you just don't have a lot of funds, you don't have a lot of things generating revenue for you, and we've been aggressive here and, and purchased that coffee plantation early and we've expanded it. So that's, that's spent a lot of our money right there but well worth it because it's pumping out good revenue for us now, a very steady in, in, income, and now we're just going to try to kind of run our way up the ridges without having too, we're going to have a pretty good climb right here. There's some point you have to climb on this uh, thing unless you went, I guess you could go almost all the way around, might 
Yeah, even then, you've still got a really steep climb. You there's a, there's, you got to, I mean, if you're going from a high spot to a low spot or a low spot to a high spot, at some point, you got to do some climbing or some dropping. So uh, you got to pay the price somehow. But this isn't too bad. We can get, get by with a pretty nice, uh, uh, relatively uh, doable uh, track here that our, our trains can definitely handle. They'll slow down a bit coming up the, the steep uh, part of it for sure, but not, it won't, it's fine. And if it's too slow, you run more trains. That's, that's the answer. That's how you do it. You run more trains. Uh, if you're, you know, if, if it takes if your intervals are too slow, you just uh, increase the number of uh, <laughs> widgets, so to speak. So um, we're setting up that line and we're gonna run it up here. And uh, let's see. I think I built a separate. Did I build a separate station for this? Let's just see. Honestly, I don't remember at this point. I don't remember which one I did. So we'll see in a minute. And I'm actually looking. Where can I get some money? And I'm looking at these. Um, I, the reason I looked at that line is. Remember your honeymoon period where you've got some stored up beer and meat to ship. After that honeymoon period, when you have two small cities uh, sending stuff back and forth, there's a point where you get some kind of diminishing returns because you're not really growing the cities very much. And uh, you can you can get your lines can, can kind of uh, deteriorate to the point where they're not making a ton of money. And um, I was checking to see if we were at that point where maybe it'd be worthwhile to kill that line for a minute and use that to uh, fund um, our track because we've got some expensive track here and you know we've got to accumulate enough money to build it. Now keep in mind the way we did this, this is April of our first year. So we've got till the end of 1902. We have three years, about two years and three quarters to, uh, to make this. So, um, we're in great shape, but again, we're just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just slow. It's just slow because we got to accumulate the funds. It's just, it's that simple. So we're looking to see if we could get any, like a, you know, a professor would be helpful. The mediators would be nice if we wanted to buy something. Um, that sometimes they can help you, you know, reduce the cost, but there's nothing there that's really going to help us. So I guess it's just uh, be patient here for a bit. So the money finally came in. We got our line built. We also deleted the trains that were running from the um, coffee over to Curitiba because we don't want them competing with the trains going down to Porto Alegre for the coffee. Uh, so here, here we're going to delete the uh, second one. So there, now we, we don't have any trains running on the... Um, coffee line to Curitiba, but we will, we will have trains running, um, you know, down to Porto Alegre. So there we go, now we've got one fired up and running. And we could have, uh, one option would have been to single track it and either run one train at a time and delete it when it gets to the bottom or just put in a little passing lane. Uh, but I decided to just go ahead and go with the double track because I know that we're gonna wanna run that line the rest of the game.
but we still need money. So I'm looking at how can we how can we get some money? And there we go. If we delete that station, that's going to cost us um, the income and the ability to run trains from um, from Sao Paulo. But it's going to allow us to get our trains queued up and, and get this uh, coffee on its way. We're really trying to get these first two. These first two tasks are, are um, uh, they're just kind of just do them. Just get them done. And that, that's the attitude we've kind of taken is just let's just get them done. Do whatever it takes to get them done. Get them out of the way. And do them very quickly so that we can... Um, uh, move on to to uh, kind of more quote normal unquote play. So we're still in our first year here, and we're closing in on getting the coffee sent down to Porto Alegre, and that'll that's supposed to be done by the end of our third year. So we're again we're in very good shape here, taking all kind of extreme measures to get it done, but uh, that's the way we've done. Now. You know, uh, if it, I, I said it in the other one, if somebody has a better way to do this where you can have a stronger economy and, and move this quickly and get both these things done within your first year, then by all means, share it with us, please. I would love to know how you did it. But now that we have the three trains running down to Porto Alegre. We know we can finish off. That's as fast as we can go to finish it off. Now we can start going ahead and shipping that coffee on this nice short route to Curitiba, which is actually even more profitable from a shipping point of view. It's the same it's six of one, half a dozen of the other for the uh, plantation. It just it's going to give us a steady income based on the fact we're shipping out goods. But the fact that we can ship them on that short haul to Curitiba is really a better run See, for us than the longer there one. Is a solution to each but there we go. October of the first year, we've got those, really both those tasks things. out of the way. And we actually do have an income. It's not a great income, but we do have some money coming in now. We've got over 7000 a week coming in from that coffee plantation. Plus, we've got the shipments of the coffee to our two cities. Uh, so we do have some income. Now we just need to put back, <laughs> kind of put back that uh, station that we had out there uh, for um, Curitiba, which actually turned out I, I built a, a regular station thinking I'd actually run my coffee into one end of it, and turned out uh, I ended up adding another station uh, and running the coffee down there. Uh, so <laughs> uh, trying to trying to think through with it. With that, been better if I just if I had a small station, if I had a regular. Nah, <laughs> uh, I don't think it matters a whole lot one way or the other. But at any rate, now we've got now we're going to take away a train. Um, the the thing is, we don't have a fast enough pace on our coffee now going down to Porto Alegre. In other words, we don't have enough money to expand the coffee plantation to the point where it will produce coffee fast enough to allow us to run efficient lines to both cities. And I'd rather run it to the short line, so we're deleting uh, a couple of the trains off that Allegra uh, run because, uh, again, it, it would just be competing for the coffee that, needs, that can go to the short run to Curitiba. So there's no benefit to sending it down to Allegra uh, right now. Now, when, it, when we can expand our coffee, then there would be a benefit to it. So now we're going to put a small station back in where it should have been in the first place uh, to replace the one we deleted. And now we can, we can get our lines going again, um, get those trains going and get our uh, reestablish our Sao Paulo to Curitiba line. So now we're, from this point forward, we're just kind of, now we're going to start kind of uh, taking, nor, making more normal play. Uh, we've kind of gotten through those two first very challenging tasks, the first one especially, very challenging. And um, we've got that kind of conquered, if you will. And now we can start thinking about city-to-city -city lines, hooking in freight, uh, running direct lines, you know, kind of playing in a, in a style that we're more used to.
Now we're going to look at starting to add some freight into the mix. We've got uh, fish, which is a fundamental, close by. So we expanded our station so we could have a dedicated line to run fish into Curitiba. And uh, we'll also be able to run fish in the other direction over to Sao Paulo. This is kind of low-hanging fruit because we'll make good money on uh, the shipments for that uh, fish, and it's a very in it's a relatively inexpensive setup. It cost us an expansion, which was 60k, uh, some track, uh, and another 40k for the station on the other end, plus a train, for another 40. So 40, 80, 140, 140 plus some track. So not a bad investment to. Uh, to bump up our income, help with the growth of the cities. Uh, Curitiba is probably getting fish, but now we'll make sure it's getting fish uh, at a good rate and we'll make money on the shipment. Now, now I'm getting ready to um, do the same thing to Sao Paulo to ship fish there. And notice, I'm going to put in a second um, small station to handle the shipments to Sao Paulo. Why is that? Well, it would probably look better to use a single station with two platforms, but I'm not after looks here. I'm after functionality and cost savings, and it's cheaper to put in that uh, single um, platform small station at 40 grand rather than paying uh, 100 grand for, or well, excuse me, 60 grand to uh, upgrade or uh, that other station. This, you know, in other words, that take a, to take a small station, make it into a regular station is 60,000, to build a, a brand new station is only 40,000. So we're just kind of turning, turning or finding a way to get up that mountain. Uh, we're down in the valley here without um, doing too much climbing. So we're going to work on figuring out a way to, to get over there. We've got a little bit of research queued up, see if there's anything tempting us. We do have some passengers, so we'll take that. If I could do it over, I wouldn't have done that right there. I would have held off for more freight stuff. We're really fo we're going to focus on freight. We will have city to city lines, but even the city to city lines all the way through this, the main thought is how can I move the freight from this city to that city? The passengers and the mail are just a bonus. And compare that to if you've watched the video I did on the uh, 
first uh, scenario, the um, the one where you play as the lady, it was the complete opposite. Everything was passengers and mail, and the freight was an afterthought until they forced us to do some city building. So here goes our, our dedicated line into Sao Paulo to deliver fish into Sao Paulo. All right, so we've got a chicha to meat line going here, or a beer meat line. And it, uh, to have a beer meat line really work, first of all, of course, you need cattle for the beer and you need corn for the chicha, or <laughs> the cattle for the meat, and you need corn for the chicha or beer. And so, the other thing about a beer meat line is, well, that, that's to make sure that you're going to keep shipping beer and meat. But you also need to usually give it something else. And we've given them uh, both sides of the equation have fish now, or they will once we get this line set up right here. So now we've got fish going to both cities. And we're, uh, in a moment, we'll add cattle in there going into Sao Paulo on the meat side and eventually we'll have to do corn of course going up to um, Uritiba for the beer side and then your city growth in the initial stages comes from having the beer meat and one or two other things we've got the one which is the fish if we throw in some logs we can actually get pretty good city growth and in fact Sao Paulo's already grown up to 20,000 and it's growing right this minute and all we're all we have is a you know really simple uh, beer meat line but then think about Sao Paulo's needs it needs fish logs corn beer meat and cattle and it's getting cattle overland now we're going to hook up a line and make sure it gets cattle at a good rate and then we get paid for it. See there it's grown through the 20,000 mark right there. I was a little ahead of myself. So of those six things it needs, it's, it's going to definitely get cattle and meat. Of course it's producing the meat. It's getting the beer from uh, Uritiba, at least for now, until uh, Uritiba kind of runs dry. And we, and we need to fix that by giving them corn. And so back to Sao Paulo, it's getting the uh, cattle, the meat, the beer, and the fish. So if it needs six key things to, to grow, it's getting four of them now. So that puts it at, at that growth point. You know, 60% is our, is our sweet spot for growth, over 60. So we're getting that right now. We're, so we are growing Sao Paulo. Now, Uritiba unfortunately now the beer side is a little harder to grow because the beer side doesn't need the cattle so it needs the beer and the corn and the logs and the fish and the meat well Curitiba's got the beer they're getting the meat from Sao Paulo they're getting the fish but they aren't getting logs and they aren't getting uh, corn and that, that corn, when the corn, uh, when their beer supply runs out, their initial beer supply, then it's going to really go into the doldrum. So it's just barely on the cusp of growth, but it's it's not growing. So your beer, your meat side grows faster early, but that's kind of you know I'm just kind of gabbing here now. Um, uh, that may, maybe you found that interesting, maybe you didn't. But the bottom line is you need those five to six. You need five things on your beer side. You need six things on your uh, uh, meat side to grow and uh, uh, that's what you need to focus on to get your initial early city growth or those key things and honestly all the way through about 60,000 population if you can get those key six things steadily going into a, a city so that they get um, or the five if they don't have a meat industry if, if they get in, in the case of this map if they get fish logs corn meat and chicha or beer if you can keep those five steady flow into a city, you will get good growth and you can hit hit your numbers. And then you can throw other things in there. They're almost like bonuses to speed up the growth. Uh, you know, that's up to a point, of course. You can't go 100, 150,000 with just that. But you can definitely get that uh, 40, 50, 60,000 growth um, based on uh, those first 
five to six main things that a city needs because they need more of that than they do of the other items. So it represents a bigger piece of the pie. Now, the one thing we got going for us um, on Curitiba too is that it needs coffee. It needs three coffees. So the coffee is actually the thing it needs the most. And we're supplying that 100%. So that's, help, that's going to help us grow Curitiba as well. In fact, I'm looking at that, it actually is growing, and that's why it's growing, is because of the coffee. It's a kind of a bonus. So speaking of bonuses, now we've got a connection bonus with, with um, Ubaraba. So Ubaraba has a connection bonus so we can connect up to the cattle. And this one kind of threw me for a loop, as I recall, because I connected up and I'm thinking I'm going to have to go ahead and connect that uh, second uh, cattle ranch to my other line in order to have a connection to Sao Paulo, but I end up getting credit for the connection and I'm thinking it's just because we're going through that cattle ranch. I, I really don't know. That one surprised me. I, I thought at this point right here, when I commit that line, I'm thinking I haven't quite done enough. I need to connect over to the other line to ha get full credit. but. Um, no, it ends up giving me credit anyway. So see, I, I start to build the build the line, but there I've already got the bonus. So I said, "Oh, okay, that that works for me." So we jumped ahead just a little bit there. We went ahead and ran some cattle into Uberaba. And now we're going to do that other side of that I was talking about, about the uh, kind of the beer meat equation. We're going to get the corn to go into um, Curitiba so that we can keep that supply of um, chicha going in Curitiba and keep the satisfaction up in Curitiba and have that um, chicha ready to sh ship <laughs> that's hard to say chicha ready to ship over to uh, Sao Paulo so here um, we are going to do some line sharing so I'm, I don't completely uh, you know, avoid um, you know smart sharing of lines and and merges and all that kind of stuff what i'm trying to avoid though here and what i do in my you know the true attican style playing is i try to avoid just going trunk line crazy where everything's going on a trunk line so here we've got that line already existing it's going through some tough terrain so we're just going to hook up with it for a while and then we're going to veer off and go in on a dedicated line into the city. In a little bit, you'll see how how I stick with that kind of theme uh, when we start running the, um, you know, a line. We, we, we really, we don't have a line yet running from Curitiba to Porto Alegre, uh, nor do we, you know, well, let me just stop right there. We don't have that line running yet, and you'll see what we do about that. But here we've got a little, little um, a split off that, uh, coffee line going to Porto Alegre so we can share some track and then run corn over to a dedicated line into a dedicated platform in uh, Curitiba so that we can keep that the beer meat thing going. Let's move ahead a little bit. Now notice how when we set up that fish line going into Porto Alegre, we gave it a dedicated line. And we built another line up there to be a dedicated line to go from 
Porto Alegre into Curitiba for that the big line when we set that up. So it, but that's the theme here, dedicated lines, dedicated lines. And, and uh, the technique I'm really using here, and I'll start using it more and more as we go along, each time I come get ready to connect a new thing into a city, I check the existing platforms to see their loads. And if, I, if they have a light load, like 17% load, for example, then sure, I'll go ahead and run another thing in there uh, because that's not too much to put on that platform. But as soon as I see a line that's like 50, 60% busy, the platform, then of course you expand the station. On some of them, I just expanded it uh, in general. So here's an expansion of, a, of the Sao Paulo um, station. And we're going to um, eventually run logs in there. Now, the other thing you might ask, some of you might be tempted, why, why don't you just build a large station in the first place? And in fact, that's the way I used to play when I first started playing this game. Uh, I, I built large stations right off the bat. But I learned over time that, well, first of all, if you take a, a small station and go from... from um, Small, expand it to a regular, then expand it to a large. It costs you a grand total of $200,000, which is the same price it costs you to build the large one. So it's all about when you spend your money. So it's better to build the small one and expand as you need to rather than spend that entire $200,000 up front when the money is so tight. Now, later on, Sure, when you when you have money rolling in and you're making money faster and you can spend it, then you can go ahead and just start with the, the large station if you choose to. But I actually stayed pretty consistent and stayed with the smaller ones and expanded them as I went along. So here we go. We've expanded Sao Paulo and now we want, want to run uh, logs into Sao Paulo. And here's a case where, uh, well, actually, I didn't even need to do the expansion of the station just yet. We didn't need the extra line because here's a case where I had checked the um, usage of that platform, and I knew that all we had was the one line of cattle coming in there, so we'll have logs coming in from the other direction, and they won't slow each other down by any, any great degree, and so it's, it's okay to have that load. Now, we don't want any more coming into that platform, so now we've got those two extra platforms to use, but the, I really could have just waited on that expansion. I kind of got ahead of myself there, but I ended up running the logs into the same uh, platform as the cattle coming in from the other side, into platform two. Uh, but again, because the uh, usage wasn't that great, uh, it was a perfectly okay thing to do, and we'll get good flow of cattle and logs into Sao Paulo, and we've still got two more platforms to play with down the road. And here's kind of a checkpoint, just kind of getting the score. And we're up to almost 800 uh, units of freight. Uh, it's, it's still in 1902, so we're doing okay. And uh, we've got a connection bonus for fish down there, so we'll grab that fish. We'll take that connection bonus, and we will um, run a line in there. I think I misspoke earlier. That extra line there was actually set up for... Uh, our city, the city line with Curitiba, and now we're going to run the fish in there. So I, I did misspeak. I was thinking that was the fish line uh, going in there, but it was actually the city, the city line, and now we're going to run fish in to um, Porto Alegre and get the bonus for it. So anytime you can get these bonuses, especially, I mean, this is a great one because it's a bonus on something you'd like to run anyway so uh, they're going to basically build that platform and track and stuff in our train for us I should say they're going to pay for it for us we have still have to build it and also notice here we don't have to run any more track other than the connection because I checked the platform and one of the platforms is zero usage so we can run our fish into that uh, that unused platform and 
and have good flow and not have to worry about uh, see we've got platform one is not being used at all and that's going to even take our our fit this that's going to take our fish over to that kind of second entry path to where it splits there and it will come in on the lower one and be completely out of the way of the city to city line so we'll go, again we'll have good flow so i think the biggest thing i've kept watching all the way through this was the flow i'm I can't stand those things where you get those uh, log jams of, of trains, either because you've made a mistake and you've got a, um, a signal in a bad place or something and everything gets stuck. Those are the worst, of course, because that's just a complete gridlock. Or just almost as bad as just where you have too many trains trying to go through a single point and they line up and just stop. It just, it's just horrible. It kills, your, it kills the whole game for you because it's costing you time, and time is the single most important resource that you have. It's the most important resource you have in a game. It's the most important resource you have in your life. Uh, time is it. <laughs> So, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and it's, it's high time we made our um, beer meat line over to Comptage. And from Comptage to Ubaraba, uh, we can get beer meat. That's going to give the meat industry in Ubaraba a, a customer. That's going to help us keep that cattle flowing. I've already discussed this principle multiple times with you. So anyway, another beer meat line, good for city growth, good for uh, hauling more goods, and we're going to be hauling beer and meat here. So even though it's a city to city line, I'm thinking of it as a freight line because we're going to be running a lot of freight uh, between these two cities. Well, that would be, that's actually, if, you, if, if, it has, if that light bulb hadn't come on for you, it's worth saying that, um, oh, and quick aside, I grabbed that cattle car. That's actually, you have to scroll back in your research to find that. That's from a prior age, but they don't give you credit for that one starting, and that's worth 8% bonus on your freight revenue, and we're trying to get freight revenue up, so that was a good one. So I held off until we had 300 research points in order to get that. Now, back to what I was saying. If, it hadn't, if you haven't caught up with that yet, if I haven't beaten this dead horse completely to death, beer meat is a freight line because beer and, and meat will flow on that line and you will get freight revenue. If you do beer beer or meat meat, you got nothing. You got passengers and mail and that's it because there's no freight in these early cities to move. But beer meat gives you freight going in both directions so it's way stronger so that's why i just keep preaching that in everything i talk about it, practically every method that I've, I've talked about in all the different videos have all been centered around the principle of getting beer meat lines and this, this is no different because this line right here there's going to be meat that's queued up in uberaba ready to ship and it's going to get shipped off to um, con <laughs> Contage, 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 and in Contage, there's going to in Contage, there's going to be chicha or beer queued up and ready to be shipped to Uberaba. So it's going to be a, a very profitable line because it's going to be more full, and and in our case, because we're after freight, it's going it is a freight line. You see me highly satisfied because my success is a success for the whole country. See that beer or chicha queuing up? And now our guy's happy because we've now hit our uh, 1,000 freight. And now we've just got to get up to that uh, $1 million quarterly revenue. And we're almost halfway there. So we've got a lot of growing to do. Um, but again, as if we keep these cities growing, that's going to increase the amount of everything that flows. And then we'll just keep expanding, of course, to keep uh, adding to the freight that we're shipping. All right, so let's wrap up this, this first uh, um, episode in this, in this uh, redo uh, right here. Um, we're off to a really good start. Uh, we've got a good economy going. We've got a good footprint. We're starting to get uh, the flow of um, the freight the way we need it. We're getting our city to city lines set up. 
we're getting our uh, cattle and our uh, corn uh, going into the to the respective chicha and, and meat producers. We're adding in the, the extras that you need for growth, like uh, logs and fish, and um, and corn. And of course, you need the corn for the chicha, but you need it for the other cities as well, uh, just for consumption. So um, we're, we're we're making good progress. Our keys here have been to make sure that we connect. Make sure and flow. Make sure that we have solid, uninterrupted flow of our trains to whatever they're taking to wherever it's going. They don't stop until they get there, basically. And that's what we've been after here. And for the most part, all the way through this, I can tell you that's what we will achieve. The way we're doing this is using dedicated point to point connections. And we're doing, um, we are checking the usage at a platform and running a couple of lines into the same platform if it's not too busy and then cutting it off and opening up a new platform every time we have a, a, a one that's even re approaching getting busy and that technique is allowing us to really manage the flow of our goods now some of you might think well just build a large uh, station and and make all four lanes accessible and just spread them out well, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Do that. And what will happen is, depending upon how you build your junctions, and I'm even going to uh, build, uh, do another video on those junctions to show you what I'm talking about here, but there's a point where you've got a single decision point on most of those junctions that you build, and that decision point becomes your bottleneck. And you've got to get rid of the bottleneck. You've got to eliminate the bottleneck as much as you can. That's why using the techniques that you're seeing on this video to do that, to get rid of those bottlenecks and keep those goods flowing, keep those trains moving. So um, there we go. There's a topic for another short video, maybe a fundamentals video uh, coming down the road shortly. But let's wrap up this one right here and we'll pick it back up uh, with our um, efforts to hit that million dollar freight revenue goal. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.